Hello and welcome to another edition of the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom, and that's where you retreat to Dr. Tom. He's not here because there's really very little math to talk about today. Again, he only comes out when a lot of stuff happens. But again, we're going to talk a little bit about SmackDown. Again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And let's get right into SmackDown. This was a really quick episode. I was shocked. Um, kind of a cold opening. You just kind of jump right in. Charlotte Flair comes to the ring. Becky comes into the ring. Carmella comes into the ring. What was that? Oh. Something, something. Oh, yeah. Flair and Becky were in gear. When they came into the ring, Carmella was not in gear. What's going on here? Oh, happy birthday, Eugene. I like saying that. Um, Carmella is just kind of... She's not awesome powers. She's not awesome baby. There's only one bay bay. Or it's going to be Adam Cole, baby! Only two times you should ever hear bay bay doing nonsense. Um, for the most part, the, the promo is really contrived. Not good. Paige, Paige came out. Paige does know how to play to a crowd. Um, and this led to the first match of the night. We had Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch versus Mandy Rose <laughs> and Boo Sonya Deville. And the only reason why I'm laughing, again, my girlfriend is not here. Mandy Rose is up. They're getting lower and lower and lower and in. And in. And in. You know what I mean. Um, and Sonya Deville, Boo Sonya Deville, not look good in black. Nor tight black, leathery pleather stuff. No. See, every little crack and or crevice. Um, Becky Lynch does need to zip up a little bit, but it was it was, an, it, was a, it was it was a good match. I mean, it's kind of a setup. Um, Becky Lynch, baby. At least, at least, at least they said it like that, baby. That's better. Mandy Rose. Not only does she shave, not only does she wax. Probably nears too. Zero. Again, I'm a hobo, and I notice certain things. But it, I mean, it was okay. I mean, the banter between Carmela and Saxon was was pretty good. After a while, it got old, and I think Carmela says that she's like, "Mel is done. I'm done with you, Brian Saxon." I mean, overall, it was pretty good. I mean, the double teams. By Mandy Rose and Deville were effective. Um, Becky Lynch kind of carried the whole match. Um, Sonya Deville, again, she can wrestle. She, I don't, I, she has to learn how to do the flare strut, though. It's not the robot. But she can talk trash in the ring. And again, it was, it was a fun cheeseburger match. Good, not great, not okay. Cheeseburger. You can't skip a cheeseburger. Then you have the first part of The Miz and Daniel Bryan. Oh, no, before that, you have The Miz with a selfie with, with Maurice. And there's going to be a second season of Miz and Maurice, which I'll talk, talk about just a little bit. I can't show any more videos. I've, I've been copyrighted, shamed. So then you have a squash match. And this is just a can of soup because it's almost like what they did, I think, last week. I mean, the same amount. It was a triple threat versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Squash match. 
it was fun. The fact that they use each other as weapons is okay. Again, same old, same old from last week. Oop. Then you had the first part of Daniel Bryan and Miz build-up. And this stems a little bit to their NXT history. It has a mentor-student relationship. When Miz was the pro and Daniel Bryan was the rookie, it was good. It kind of gave a little backstory to it. Uh, then you had a six-man tag, the Sanity versus the New Day. And this was also a really fun match. I mean, what was was good. It wasn't great. And it was better than okay. I mean, this was a cheeseburger match. I mean, the fact that they're doing, like, new stuff. Um, I think Kobe had, like, a, leap, a leapfrog senton. It's like, whoa. Oh, happy birthday, Kofi Kingston. And then poor Kofi got beat up. Oh, the only other thing I really want to say about this match, Sanity needs more strobe light. They also need Nikki Cross. That's that's my Nikki Cross rant of SmackDown right now. And Sanity, they do great. They do great tag them, tandem tag team action. And the New Day also does the great tandem tag team action. It's good. I mean, <laughs> Killian Dane hit the fun splash. I mean, that just makes you smile. Yeah, and it made me smile. Cheeseburgers make me smile. It gets a cheeseburger. Then you have the second part. Oh, um, then was a happy birthday chant. Again, it was Kofi Kingston's birthday. Um, then you have the second part of the Dan and Brian and Miz, which focused really on the talking smack. Again, I don't know why they ever did away with talking smack. That was probably the best post TV show they had in a long time. I mean, that was good stuff. And the Miz is really was good on that. Then you have Samoa Joe and Paige. Um, Samoa well, Joe just is good. And he also has he also has a really nice office too. I mean, you saw a little bit into his dressing room. It wasn't a dressing room. It was like a nice like fake leather chair, coach thing, desk. It was good. Oh, also with the stadium, they were, I know they were in Greensboro, North Carolina, but you can tell part of it was blacked out. I guess they didn't have a cell. They put, like, the black tarp over, like, the one se section of the bleachers. Not good. Then you had Aiden English versus Andrade Cien Almas. El Hilo, Lo Sombra. And, and this was good. And Susan Vega shows a lot of hip. Why are you Latin women? <laughs> Um, is Aiden English going to turn heel? He had the black wrist wraps on. You never know. Um, it was a good match. Uh, Vega did the distraction. And, of course, uh, it was okay. I mean, Aiden English, he, he got his offense in, and he made it actually really interesting. It was a little, a little bit botchy at spots, but it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. It was okay. Not good. Not great. Not dull. But okay. Ham sandwich. Uh, then Rusev came out. And of course there was a promo. Sunday's going to be El Fin Del Russo, El Fin Del Lana. Lana Day, Lana. Of course, so of course that prompted Rusev to come out to say, Every day, especially Sunday, is Rusev Day. And Sunday is also Lana Day. Lana is the best. Lana, number one. Well, Lana still kind of flip-flops back and forth between her Tennessee and Russian accent, though. She has to nail that down a little bit better. Then you have the third part of Daniel and Brian the Miz. Meh. Nah. I mean, I, I think the next match... Jeff Hardy versus Shelton Benjamin. This could have been really good, but you didn't get to see a lot of it. I mean, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The commercials really kill 
some of the action on SmackDown. And the matches are a little bit shorter. They have to fit a lot more in. Oh, shoot. Oh, I don't know where that came from. But again, it was it was okay. it was it was good. I mean, he won with a spl- he won with a twist of fate and a splash. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sheldon Benjamin can wrestle his brains out. Uh, Jeff Hardy's, I think, getting a little bit up there. He- I remember when he first first came into WWE and they jobbed out to the Rockers. Wow, a long time ago. So I think his body's finally showing the normal wear and tear. So he so he, he slowed down a bit, but but again, when, when you have a history, when you have history spanning like twenty some odd years, trust me, when you're at age twenty, you're not going to move the same way as as you are age thirty nine or I think he's in his forties. Early, I forget if it's early 40s or late 30s. So he finished off with a splash, and Sheldon Benjamin is no slouch. They were still, he was still hitting some moves that were pretty good. Again, it, it was okay though. And again, I think the commercials really did it. In. If I didn't have to sit through all the boring commercials, I think during some commercial I just kind of left and was looking up shirts at Pro Wrestling. When I do want to find another tan colored shirt, I'm beginning to that color is beginning to grow on me. My girlfriend still thinks that my hobo shirt's green. It's tan or, or sand colored, whatever that is. Then there was an AJ promo. And it was pretty good. I mean, he knows how to deliver a promo, make it seem national. And it also seems like he's allowed to improv a little bit because he started off. For the past 20 years, and then the crowd just starts, starts chanting, AJ Styles, AJ Styles. That, that went on for a good couple of minutes. And he's, he's like, and, and then he looked up, and it looked like he said, well, I'm so blessed. And it's an improv, and I'm, and I'm sure someone in the back saying, oh, that's, that's, that's not his lines. It's AJ Styles, folks. He, he can do his own. Um, <laughs> but the one thing I, I would like to see, <laughs> and this is just me, I want to see AJ Styles go, go Scott Steiner. I just call Samoa Joe, you fat bastard. Again, if he really wants to even the score, just bring back Bullet Club, wear your Bullet Club mask, have the club show up. And just beat up people. Um, Joe Joe shows up. Joe gets a chance, and AJ gets his chance. And, and this should this should really be the marquee match. Summer. I'm afraid they're going to screw it up and not let them wrestle the way they're capable of wrestling. Um, probably, and you'll get my predictions probably Thursday or Friday. Um, but I want to say this should. Be the best match on the SummerSlam card. Probably the second best match would be the Daniel Bryan Miz match. And then, so hard to say because that's, that's going to be a long show. Well, I've had a long day, I guess. Oh. Maybe I should have had that mountain lightning if I did this. But Joe came out, did his promo, wrote, wrote a letter, and I'm not going to read verbatim, but again, it was saying how AJ Styles is a terrible dad, terrible father, terrible husband, and it was, of course, from Wendy Styles. Ooh. I wouldn't want to do that if I were you, Joe. And then he just walked off. So it was really weird. There's no, it's no real... Anyone standing tall, so with the exception of Jeff Hardy, and again, at the end of the Jeff Hardy match, again, he did win. Vince Nakamura came out. He, he, he did do a good job fending off Nakamura, Nakamura and did hit a swanton bomb on Nakamura. So probably Nakamura is retaining. I want to say it's because Randy Thornton, who is hiding in, behind the curtain, 
Because only if you had a camera could you see Ran Yorn hiding behind the curtain. Unless you were actually looking for Ran Yorn. So, I, the only thing this show told me, Jeff Hardy's losing. That's what the math says. And we all saw Dr. Keller. Dr. Keller is, is back in his house along the river with his maid servant. Probably eating some flaming on. I'm stuck with a ham sandwich from Walmart. But that was the show, and overall, I mean, it was it was kind of a weird show. It was just it was it was good. It wasn't okay. It wasn't great. It was good. Probably kind of I guess what you expect for your typical go home show. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Oh, wait, and before I end the show, I can't do this anymore because I realized I was getting copyrighted. WWE was saying, we want your money, Hobo Tom. But little do they realize there's a reason why I'm Hobo Tom. Uh, Ms. and Mrs. Again. <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Ms. knows how to play with props. It was just fun for the first five minutes to play with GoPros. Maurice is amazing. The two of them have the most natural expressions that you would expect during circumstance, during certain circumstances. Um, Dolph is also incredibly funny, too. He had the one line. I think the Miz was asking how to hide one of his cameras, and, and the Dolph is like, are, are you two getting creative in the bedroom? And the Miz is like, well, the poor stage. The poor seamstress woman, I don't know who she is. She she was just like Um that and, and the mom. Um but Majore? I think that's what her name is. Um Maurice didn't want the mom to be there at the birth of the child, so so I think in order to ease that she bought her a very fancy Louis Vuitton purse. And then she kind of told her mom that she's like, we don't want you here. She's like, okay, you're going to buy me. And the mom said, okay, you're going to buy me shoes now. Okay. And and she, just, she had a great reaction, though. It's like, that's all I, that's all I had to do. Um, the Miz went when his child was born. And congratulations, Miz. I know it's, it's related, but the first time you see on TV. Um, the, Lou, the Miz looks truly shocked and awed. And he has just as a look like his life just changed for the, for the best. And the Miz rules. The Miz is so good. So again, that's the end of the show. Again, I can't show up anything. I've had too many shame shames. And I don't feel like doing it anymore. Because if I ever do become monetized, again, because of you great folks out there in the YouTube universe for liking, sharing, and subscribing, and thank every thank you everyone for watching my little tribute I did to Jim Neidhart. I think one people gave it a thumbs up. That's good. Again, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And probably Thursday you'll see me again, and my girlfriend will actually be on the speakerphone. And we'll do our predictions for NXT TakeOver first. And then probably Friday night or Saturday night, figure out some stuff as I look at my calendar, put up my predictions for a five-hour show, SummerSlam. Two hours of the pre-show. Wait, or is it more? I think it's actually six hours. Oh, shoot. Seven minus eleven is four. Six hours. Wow. Well, we'll see what happens again. I'll I'll keep everyone posted as to when I live stream and stuff. Everyone have a good night.